During the restoration of this antique Husqvarna Freya sewing machine, I discovered a few tricks that might be helpful to anyone else wanting to restore their own sewing machines. Before getting started, it's important to thoroughly clean the machine with a good degreaser so any paint that's applied sticks to the surface. Also, using magnifying glasses like these will help do finer work so that any mistakes are so small they can't really be seen. First up, after comparing a dozen different gold paints and pens, I found the one that provided the closest match to the gold paint used in decals was Deco Colors Liquid Gold Opaque Pen Marker. Its color is slightly lighter than decals, but it darkens to a near perfect match after applying a coat of protecting shellac. Although it comes with a very fine tip, the paint's viscosity is such that it tends to spread. It's hard to draw a line finer than two millimeters, which is too big for fine detail. Another problem is that once in a while, the paint will flow out of the tip and create a puddle, which is a real mess to clean up. To get around these problems, I seldom use the paint pen directly, or if I do, I use masking tape. For small touch-ups, such as in this example, I use a toothpick or bamboo skewer to pick up a small amount of paint off of the pen and then apply it directly to the machine. Work quickly because the paint dries fast. For larger sections on lines where you want nice straight edges, border the line or the detail to be touched up with good quality masking tape then fill it in. Once it's dry, remove the masking tape, to reveal a nice clean edge. For curves, use thin strips of vinyl insulating tape, which bends easily and lays flat. This is particularly useful for working around corners and surfaces on the sewing machine that aren't perfectly flat. If some of the ink leaks underneath the edge of the tape, it can usually be scratched off with an X-Acto knife. Just be careful not to cut too deeply and scratch the underlying finish. Very fine lines are difficult because it's almost impossible to lay down two strips of tape that are perfectly parallel, especially if the line curves. One solution is to mount two X-Acto blades on top of each other into a blade holder. This creates a channel between which you can cut into a piece of masking tape which will produce an extremely fine line. Restoring complex decals like this one can be tricky, but taken one step at a time, it's amazing what can be accomplished. For example, half of this decal on the other side was completely destroyed. Fortunately, like most machines, this one has the same decal on both sides, so we can use this one to create a pattern for the opposite side. The only problem is, is this is a mirror image of the other side, so we have to get a little tricky to work around that. Start by covering the area to be reproduced with masking tape that you can see through, but with the sticky side facing out. You'll see why in a second. Use small pieces of tape to secure it. Next, use a fine pen to trace out the design needed. Remove the tape and put it sticky side down this time on a piece of white cardstock. This reverses the image so that it's correct for the opposite side. Now place a piece of the clear tape on top of it. 
and use the two-bladed cutter to cut out just one of the lines that need to be repaired. Remove the cutout strip. Remove the upper layer of tape. Apply it to the area of the machine on the opposite side requiring restoration and press it down. You may want to use a, the point of a bamboo skewer to clean up any irregularities. Fill it in with the pin. Let it dry. And here's the result. One line at a time is done because if all the lines were cut at once, the masking tape would be reduced to dozens of tiny pieces that would be impossible to get properly aligned. Let the line dry for a couple of hours so it doesn't smear when working on the next line. A thin layer of shellac will help stabilize each layer before the next is attempted. Build up the image one layer at a time until the entire decal is recreated. An alternative is to stick the master template onto the sewing machine, cut out all the lines at once, and paint all at once. The problem is that this invariably produces scratches on the original finish, which the final layer of shellac may or may not cover. And here's the final result. Any minor defects can be covered up with some gloss black enamel, I like testers, and the skewer routine again, where you can get down to very fine details. Next, what we need to do is embellish this with the colors. Color embellishments show up in two different forms. First are the opaques, which are done with simple enamels, hand-painted usually. The other are a little bit more complicated. These are washes or blushes over the gold paint, which are intended to be translucent enough to let some of the gold luster come through the paint. These are semi-transparent paints and these are problematic because I couldn't find a transparent enamel or even a paint pen that would work well with this. So I invented my own. I found that Sharpie pens did a pretty good job and they were permanent until you clear coated them with the shellac. The solvents in the shellac dissolve this and wash them completely away. But I like the colors. So what I did is I took a small bottle and I filled it up with the shellac. Then I took the reservoir out of the Sharpie pen and squashed all of the ink into the shellac, mixed it up, and now I have a translucent, almost, tra almost transparent color that goes on very easily, very controllably, is permanent, and then when I clear coat it with the shellac, because it's already shellac based, doesn't wash out. Here we have a sample petal from one of the flowers. Using a fairly dry brush, stroke from the area you want to be the darkest towards the lightest and feather it out. You want a really thin layer. Let that dry, then come back and if you want it a little bit darker, put a second layer on top of it. This will produce the most uniform coloring. With a little work, this will be almost as good as a decal. Here are some close-ups of the decals restored using some or all of the techniques presented in this video. All that's required is a little patience and care. The final step is to apply at least one coat of clear shellac. The great thing about shellac is that because that's what was originally used on all antique sewing machines, it will blend with any remaining shellac and repair it. Better still, a hundred years from now, it can still be easily removed and repaired. Modern clear coats don't have this flexibility. And that's it. I hope these suggestions help you with your own restorations. For more about antique sewing machines, please visit my main website at waynesthisandthat.com. And as always, thank you very much for watching.